Hello you lot, Miller Corner here, welcome back once again. And the other day I went to a meet in Paddock Wood organised by Abarth South East and it was a fantastic meet. Over 50 cars in attendance, gorgeous quality of cars, 124s, 595s, 695s. It was a gathering of all things Italian, small and awesome. I loved the meet and it was fantastic. But one car there stood out to me in particular. There's a lot of Abarths here, but I've come here for one in particular. That one. is the car I've come all this way to see. This is a Seicento. You know how much I love them, and this one, well, put it this way. Earlier this year, I said how this year I want to make the Super Seicento the best Seicento in the UK. This is my competition. Well, competition. We're not in competition, but this, for me, is the best Seicento in the UK right now. This is the kind of standard of car I'm aiming for. Once you've seen this thing, you'll understand why. It is absolutely incredible. Now, this one belongs to a lovely guy called Leslie, and he is absolutely living the dream because he's got this beast, and his other car is a Lamborghini Uraco. That's right, he's got this gorgeous thing and a bright red Lamborghini Uraco. Dream two car garage, I'm just gonna say it. I'm absolutely in love with this thing. It's incredible. He's owned this for 15 years, I believe. He spent, uh, for the sake of everyone watching, I won't tell you how much he spent on it over the years, but let's just say it's worth every penny of what he thinks he paid for it, and you're about to see why. Now, this is actually where I'm gonna start, which is the badge. Some of you might think this is very, very odd. Some of you that know Sicentos will think, why is it an SX Sporting? SX is like the normal boring version, Sporting being the cool body kitted one. Reason being, this was towards the end of the Seicento's life while they were struggling to sell them, they did a very very rare run car which was an SX, a non-sporting, it had the same bumpers and it had the nice lovely side skirts there and it had the Abarth wheels on it. It was an SX Abarth. So it's an SX which is the kind of lower down the rung model but with an Abarth kit, but nothing else on it. Doesn't have the Abarth suspension, doesn't have the leather steering wheel and gear knob, doesn't have the Abarth interior on it. It's a very, very, very odd model. Leslie's done an amazing job of this car. So let's take a walk around. Where's all start from the back, because we're here now. It's got these light covers, which I really, really like. And to complement them, you may note that they are ever so slightly tinted. They're just a little bit darker than they should be standard. And on a dark blue car like this, Gorgeous, gorgeous touch. Got a full Jan Speed exhaust system. So he's got the same stainless exhaust manifold that I have, four to two to one, but then a full, all the way along, Jan Speed exhaust, which means it sounds the nuts. Not quite as raspy and unrefined and as bow as the Super Sacento, but absolutely gorgeous to be sure. This, I'm gonna get you a close up, is called Tesso Blue. It's a really, really nice blue with a bit of pearl in it, you might be able to see there, and it is absolutely stunning. With the sun catching it like that, oh, this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous color on this thing. Getting color matches and even getting samples of the paint to do touch-ups and stuff, he sold me is a nightmare. You can't get a touch-up pen in it very easily, and almost no body shop seems to carry Tesso Blue because it's so damn weird and rare and unusual. But no doubt in my mind that this is one of the best factory blues 
I've ever seen. We've got the same Abarth wheels that I have on the Super Seicento as we speak, and he's got some very nice Pirelli P6000s on it. I can tell by the fact I can read Pirelli P6000 on it. That means lots of grippage, lots more than the crappy tyres the Super Seicento is currently rocking. That's for sure, that will change, don't you worry. Abarth side skirts that all the Seicento Abarths have. I'm not a fan of these. Sorry to Leslie, sorry to everyone who likes these. I don't, I think they're a little bit too finny and over the top not a huge fan myself but anyway he likes them that's cool carbon dipped door handles that is a really really small but very classy touch i like that a lot and that does echo what you can option on the newer abarth 595s and 695s so no doubt in my mind that's a classy touch mirror caps they've been carbon dipped the edges of the mirrors have been carbon dipped as well lots of little touches that add up to a car looking way better than standard every Sagento i've seen with these they are shot to bits they're moldy they're rotten they're peeling off the ones on the super Sagento are worthy only as a doorstop or to go in the bin these look like they're freaking brand leslie how are you doing this man this is ridiculous up front we've got what i believe to be the same punto gt brakes that the super sicento is rocking with the same grooved and what appears to be dimpled rather than drilled discs and we've got some carbon effect abarth detailed dust caps just for that extra little bit of quality touch it's really it's just a classy classy example of a modified car this thing we do have a sporting bumper but those of you that know your Seicentos will know this isn't quite normal. Leslie has done, as you can probably tell here, a custom grille. These two grills at the front here normally have fog lights in, he's just got clear mesh. Now that means of course you get more air to the radiator, you delete those big ugly blocks with the fog lights in and you kind of make the whole front end of the car much cleaner, much neater and a bit more aggressive. Something that's quite unusual but I like it here are these kind of eyelids on the headlights. Do them too big and they can look chavvy but on here just a little bit just I don't know what's that inch something like that and color match to the paint as well. This looks awesome it just looks like a really it looks like what it is which is an aggressive little puppy dog. There you go that's angry puppy. Down here we've got a relocated air intake down low so you can suck in as much cold air for your mighty engine as possible unlike a lot of people who have these just down low suck in a load of puddle water and then of course eventually probably kill their engine he has got at the top of this pipe a nice little drainage hole in there so if any water does get sucked up drops straight back out so he ain't kill his engine anytime soon he's even i've just noticed he's even painted the screws he's even got them actually painted black as opposed to just rusty and crap like most of us have that is nice but that tells you how much time and effort he's put into this car. <laughs> Does this front end look normal? Mostly. Keep walking out. Does it still look normal? Does it still look normal? That doesn't look normal. He's rolled these arches. It's been puffed out. He tells me spaces are on the way to push these out. No one cares about your micro. Look how nicely done this is. This isn't your chav with a courser done with hammers while their mate pulls it out. This is nice and smoothly done and you'd never know by looking at it that it wasn't factory. Look, there's no kinks in the paint. The pearl keeps going throughout. It's just really nicely flows in it. Oh my God. And because he drives a Lamborghini, of course, we've got Lamborghini Club, Lamborghini Club, Club Cento, which is the real OG Cento forum in the UK. Early 2000s, I believe, this is pretty much defunct these days. But yeah, back in the day, if you were into Centos or Cinco Centos in the UK, you were on Club Cento. Italian spec number plate, carbon effect, 3D printed, and you may notice bull, because of course it's a baby bull, because in case you've forgotten, he's got a Lamborghini. Lucky bastard. Let's jump inside and show you how much time and effort he's spent inside this. This is what's called a luxury pack door card. Yep. Drinking the luxury people. We're not done with the doors yet though. You may notice the actual door handles he's had carbon dipped and they look really nice. The door pull kind of armrest things, they've been color coded with the body in that Tesso blue again and just wow. I cannot put into words how impressed I am with the gorgeous level of detail in this thing. It's incredible. This is going to be carbon dipped in the near future, he tells me. Team Heco wind deflectors, because of course he's part of the squad. This is an 83,000 mile. 15 16 year old car with a steering wheel that looks like it's just rolled out of the factory ashtray cover carbon dipped custom made custom adapted abarth gear knob which the lift up reverse does still work that's really nice and because it's not metal it's not going to burn your hand off if you use it on a hot summer's day we've got these chrome surrounds down here for the gear stick and for the handbrake now these are actually off the uh, schumacher models he's put them on this one and then with the handbrake as you can see there 
he's actually kind of grafted the Abarth Scorpion into it. This dude is a legend. Leslie, you've got an incredible car, my friend. We've got a sunroof cover now. This was actually an original factory option. They do exist, but he's kind of fitted his properly, unlike the factory did, which means it doesn't just drop down every time you slam the door. That is actually in place. That's solid, it works, and if anyone's got one for like no money at all, send it my way, please. The seats, the seats are an interesting one because you'll note they're not sporting seats. These are the seats that came in the SX Abarth. They're just standard SX seats, which is light gray, which is blue, which is with gray headrests. It's really weird to see these in an interior front Abarth. So much about this car is so well cared for though. Even these door pockets and these kick panels, which normally have the absolute crap beaten out of them, because of course, if you get in out of the car these are the things you're gonna kick they're mint they're brand new dude you're ridiculously good at taking care of your car we've got more carbon dippage going on with of course the electric window switches and it is going to be having all of the vents dipped as well just a uniform that look and then there's this this is a stereo but also as you might not be able to tell by looking at it a dvd player i kid you not this screen is a DVD player. This is made by Rip Speed. Now, back in the day, Rip Speed made all sorts of cool stuff for your modified car. They made wheels, they made cool sort of metallic stainless steel pedals, and they made stereo stuff. And this is a stereo head unit that's got a three and a half or four inch DVD player screen on it. Your phone screen is probably bigger, but if you've got a Seicento, that is the height of technology. And we're not done yet with how well Leslie has done with making the in-car entertainment work in this thing. This plug down here is USB. You didn't even see that, did you? He's just tucked it. Quickly, before we jump out, stainless steel kick plates. I want some now. I'm gonna be very careful not to scratch this because it is an absolute beauty. You can tell how gentle I'm being by the fact the door didn't shut first time and these doors weigh like three grams. They're very, very difficult to not shut. Custom sub box. He's got a subwoofer back here and indeed you can see the amp back there and it's shaped around the really, really intrusive Seicento standard arches. They normally kind of cut into the boot like this. He's actually got a custom shaped sub box here and it sounds genuinely awesome, but not in an irritating way. It's not excessive sub, it just works and it's neat. And for a car with such a small boot, you'd never believe you could put a sub in it and an amp and still have enough space for your Lamborghini branded jacket and what I can only presume are very many pairs of sunglasses. There's lots of nice little treats hiding under here but I can't do it one handed so um, bear with me. You ready? You ready? You ready? Check this engine bay out. Let's go into detail with everything you're seeing here. The bonnet stay is Italian flag. Of course it is. We've got covers for the top of the struts, which just make it a lot less crap and ugly looking. That's really nice and neat. We've got an OMP strut brace, which has been color coded in Tesso blue to the car. We've got an ECU that's also been carbon dipped or wrapped and we're not done yet. You may also note Italian flag on the coil pack. Battery bracket color coded to the car. Leslie, you're, I, I love you and I hate you, dude, because your car is awesome, but it also makes the rest of us look bad. I mean, Jesus Christ! We've got an intake here with everything in blue, an AEM filter, Abarth printing on the piping, and you will notice that all the silicon joiners for the oil breather, it's all been blue color coded. He's gradually in the process of making sure all the piping's in blue as well. All of this is gonna be made blue as well, along with this already is, to make it as uniform as possible. I'm not done yet, look! He's even painted the nuts and bolts in blue as well to make those color coded. This guy's a legend. He's just made the most incredible engine mode possible out of one which, if you've seen mine, you know how ugly they can look. This is the opposite of mine. This is stunning. We had a bit of a debate on one of the Cento pages I'm on on Facebook. Someone said when I put on my first video this year, they said, well, what is the best Cento in the UK? And a few people said, what about this one? What about this one? What about this one? But one of the very first, most frequent, and generally most agreed on suggestions was Leslie's car and you know what I agree with all of them because that Seicento is for me without doubt the best in the country right now it's a credit to its owner and I just 
I adore it. I absolutely love it. And not only is it inspiration for me, but it's proof of what these crappy little cars can be when you put the love into them that they truly deserve. And all that remains to say now is, better make mine that good, aren't I?